Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> what an interesting day. So thank you so much, everyone who's joining me. In spite of, once again, some technical glitches. But I'm here, and I'm hoping you can hear me. So if you can hear me and see me, please say hi and let me know. <laughs> It is another live stream pop-up art studio. Hmm. And forgive me if there are some glitches. There have uh, been some changes in the whole Facebook live stream things that we're still adapting to. To be honest, I got a little lazy and I forgot to check up on them. So thank you folks for being here. Thank you for having patience and finding us. Again. If you're out there and you're watching, say hi, just to let me know everything is coming across. <laughs> and thanks everybody again for, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, goodness. Hi, Jay. I'm going to ask another question of folks. Am I too glitchy? Is it starting and stopping for everyone or just for me? Sometimes my screen reacts in a different way, but if it's also coming across super glitchy for you too, please let me know. Does that make sense? But in the meantime, I'm just gonna keep going. And welcome everybody. Once again, I started the live stream before and there was no sound. That's what happened last week too. But we've hopefully figured that one out. Now, if you're new to the whole live stream uh, pop-up art studio thing on Facebook, well, this is what it is. I'm here for the next hour and a half. I make art, I chat with community, and we have that sense of connection that we, you know, we had before when we were in the studio space. So make yourself a cup of coffee, have a cup of tea, relax, gather some supplies, make art along with me if you like to. If not, you know, maybe you're not feeling inspired. Mm, oh, that's good. Oh, nice. So no glitches for Jay. That's good. So it's just on my screen. That's okay then. I don't mind. Um, if, if you're, yeah, like maybe you're not feeling like making art today, that's okay too. You're totally allowed just to do what you need to do during this time. And if all that is right now is just, you know, listening, watching, treating us like we're a podcast or something like that, that's okay. I don't mind. This is time for you to set aside to just... Give yourself some creative something in your day, right? And you might have other things that you have to do. Sometimes people like listening or watching from work as they're doing other stuff, and that is okay. Do what feels right for you. But if you are making art, fantastic. Let me know what you're working on. I always love to hear what our community members are working on. And, you know, sometimes if you're having trouble or you're stuck, you know, if you're having that inner critic is really getting really loud and preventing you from just enjoying what you like to do, let us know too. And that way we can talk to it, figure out what's going on. And you never know, someone out there in the community might be there, might be a resource to you and be able to help you through that moment. We've all had those days. We've all had those experiences. And, you know, sometimes a little community troubleshooting is just the thing you need to break through and get to the other side. So that is... I'm just so glad that everyone's here. Hello, hello, hello. So, and if you are tuning in later, once this has been archived, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Let me know what you're working on, even though I'm not there to answer live right away. You can still ask questions. You can still participate in the chat. It just might take me a little longer to get back to you. And of course, if anyone is out there and you have really urgent questions for the living room, send me an email, right? Still might take some time for me to get back to you, but send me an email. Uh, that's a surefire way to get a hold of me. And when I'm, as soon as I have a moment, I'll get back to you, answer your questions, let you know how you can participate, engage, what we have coming up, and all of that stuff, right? But thank you everyone to joining. How are you doing today? <laughs> that's always a big question and I'm always interested to see and to learn how folks are doing out there. This is an interesting change of season. Things, have, at least here in Oshawa, have gotten really cold. We can definitely feel that winter coming along, creeping along, moving towards us. 
the mobile art hive just for a little update is getting closer to being ready and being out there in community we're super excited to have the official launch coming your way sometime soon um, but again with the winter we may not be able to do all the things we were really hoping to do so that's a bit of a disappointment for us but it doesn't mean that we can't get out there and connect and find ways of being creative with one another all right so that's good to know jay saying i'm not getting glitches but oh you have me up on your tv wow haha -ha. <laughs> always good to know i know there's some other folks who like doing that too who stream stuff from their laptops or whatever onto their tvs it's always strange to think that my head might be that big like it's you know in your in your space but it's nice to know i'm there it's nice to know i'm there all right so folks if you are new just another recap this is just an hour and a half where we spend time making art and connecting with one another chatting um sharing ideas getting back in touch with one another. If you're new, don't be shy, say hi if you want to, but if all you want to do is sit back and not engage in the chat, that's okay. I only know when people are watching if they participate in the chat. So um, if you'd like to be heard or seen or acknowledged, just step up and say hi. Of course, same rules as safe space and accountability apply in the virtual setting as they do in the physical setting. So again, we invite everyone to be really supportive of one another, encouraging, respectful, negotiate consent, even if it's only in the chats in the comment section. But of course, we invite you to be that way and to treat yourself with kindness and well regard as well. Okay, if you're having trouble, again, let us know and we can help work work through that together if that's something you're interested in. And of course, in this space, um, if something happens that makes you feel weird, please let me know. It's an accountable space and we learn from those moments of weirdness or awkwardness where we might be doing things unintentionally or saying things that create some kind of not good feeling in one another. We shouldn't feel afraid to talk about those things and work our way through those things as well. Uh, again, you don't necessarily have to do it in the comments, but if you feel like chatting and letting me know, sending me an email, um, bringing it up in messages, feel free to do that because that's how I learn and grow and become better at this whole creative humaning thing. And every once in a while, it's important to address things that are out there in the community um, that might be causing some rupture in not a good way. So this is a creative space where we can begin to do that and highlight certain things. Of course, we want to celebrate things as well. So if you have exciting projects coming up or you're doing interesting things out there in the community or you have an event coming up or maybe an exhibit or sale of what you create, please let us know and feel free to put comments or links in the section, in the chat section, so that we can shine a light on what creators in our community are doing and, you know, help generate that enthusiasm, that vibrancy for one another that's missing when we, you know, that might be missing when from those times when we could interact in person more effectively. <laughs> oh, it's good to see some hearts and sparkly things. Now, just a heads up, things are strange from my end in the tech today. So if I'm taking extra long to reply to a comment, it might be that the comments aren't coming up as quickly for me. I think Cree was having this issue last night as well. Um, so yeah, I, I invite you to be patient with me uh, as well as with yourself today. And maybe that's the overarching theme of what we're gonna work on, right? So to start, because I wanna dive in and get creative, let me just move on over and start making some art. And again, if you're out there, say hi, don't be afraid to chat. Let me know what you're working on. And uh, yeah, shine a light on what you do because you're lovely and your stories matter. And of course, art, when we talk about art as usual, that can mean so many different things. It's not just visual art, even though most Wednesdays, that's what I tend to work on here. It's all different forms of creative self-expression. And today, again, using some unusual backdrops or backgrounds or canvases for what I'm going to work on. I want to explore just getting back to basics, right? I've been missing out on just that sense of simplicity in everything I'm doing. I'm not sure about you, but every once in a while, it's good to revisit things that bring a certain sense of comfort. And today I had the honor of um, going in to talk with uh, 
I guess they call it, is it a capstone class? I'm not sure, even I can't even remember what capstone means, but I was at Trent University Durham chatting with a group of students who are working with the RMG to address some issues and spark off some new initiatives. And I had an opportunity to talk about what we do at the living room, what we did, what it looks like now, um, what we hope it'll look like in the future. And it really got me thinking about uh, just, again, you know, what works? And sometimes it's the simplest thing. Sometimes it's about going back to basics and making sure that we're maintaining the things that give us joy and help us feel connected to one another. So I'm gonna go way back. I'm just gonna go back to some handprint art because sometimes, one of the things that always comes up when we talk about community art engagement and the art hive concepts overall is this idea that that um that art is is fundamentally something that children do and of course it is kids make art without even thinking about it right they don't have to be told if they walk into a room and there are art supplies there they will make art they just will that's what will happen but as we get older, of course, and I'm sure everyone, everyone watching, whenever you are watching from wherever you are watching has experienced this, we kind of lose touch with that creative impulse, with that, so, with that joy, with the um, kind of the feeling of belonging, that art, and creativity belongs to us as much as everyone else, right? And art becomes about making practical things. Art becomes about, you know, just the life work things. If we're lucky, we have some kind of regular routine that we maintain, something that that brings us joy that we do on a regular basis. It might be journal writing, it might be knitting or crocheting, any of those things, right? Could be decorating, gardening, cooking. But on the whole, a lot of folks, especially first time folks that we meet at the living room, there is that sense of I'm not an artist. And that was one of the conversations that we were having with the class today. That, you know, confronting that part of ourselves that doesn't believe we have something to say. Oh, and Jay's saying, love my nail polish color. Thank you. Always like having a bit of something in this. I remember someone talking about watching live streams is interesting because the hands and the activity that's the center of things has its own, has its own um, character, right? So there's my face and then there's my hands, right? And then there's the art I create. So I might as well do something with my nails, tiny canvases that they are. And I think I'm in my Tin Man phase right now. Definitely going for a kind of silver vibe. I'm really enjoying this color. So thank you, thank you very much. What am I going to do right now? Yeah, so this conversation, of course, if you're familiar with the studio, you've been a part of these conversations in the past. What do I wanna do here? You know what, I started with some black, but I'm gonna start with a Sharpie first and outline this hand. So just reclaiming that part of ourselves that believes in our creative energy, that believes that it's worthy, that what we have to express is a value, even if it has no practical kind of implication. Hey, Wendy, Wendy's back in Ontario, folks. Welcome, welcome back to the chill, the chilly Ontario air. It's good to have you here, Wendy. And no doubt you've had some extraordinary adventures out east. I'd love to hear about them. I'd love to hear, actually. I know things are still strange and uncertain in a lot of places, but I'd love to hear if there was any kind of creative spark, some inspiration that you've brought back with you that could have only have happened from having that little visit, that little travel out of province. And if there's anything you might want to share with the community, I don't know, who knows? And I'm gonna just expand upon this. Yeah, permission to create, permission to revisit some of the childhood things that we do, that we love. 
things that bring meaning. Simple things. And seeing out of those simple things what kind of extraordinary creativity we can find. Things that might set up or inspire or inform future projects. Right? And again, pose, folks, as a little post, let me know if I'm if there's anything different about this live stream, if things are glitchy or extra weird or if they're freezing where you're at. Because every once in a while, things go weird on my end, but they don't always go weird on your end. So I'm always, it's always good to know what's going on and if it's something I need to address immediately. <laughs> okay. Hey, Nikki. And Nikki says, hi, Mary, how are things going on, going with the bus? Whew, almost there. We are almost there. Uh, we have, the bus is currently being painted. It should be done, we were told, maybe this Thursday. Uh, then we have things to do like, uh, like simple things uh, that may seem simple, but are also kind of complicated, like getting some decals on the side of the bus. We were hoping just so people know like what the heck this thing is <laughs> as we're driving down the road or when we arrive on location in places. Um, and again, we were hoping to have an artist paint it, but we don't think that's gonna have, be able to happen this season just because of the weather and the delays with the project and things like that. Now I'm using a combination of old fashioned watercolors and watercolor crayons in this just to explore, yeah, exploring color, playing with color and softer palettes. I'm really, I'm feeling drawn to softer palette, color palettes these days. I'm not sure why. So we're gonna start with these things and this is broken. So I'm going to just break that off to make it easier to handle. But all in all, the bus, hopefully you'll be seeing it out and about soon. And I think actually, I'll be having some kind of town hall meeting virtually just to check in with folks and learn uh, more about what they feel would be helpful in the next few months, especially. Because of course we have funding net right now for a lot of the online program we're doing and for the community outreach program that we're doing. Um, but once the new year comes, we're going to have to reevaluate, shake things up, try some new things. Uh, it might mean a reduction in some of the online programming that we're doing right now. I think we're going to hold on to the Wednesday live stream. I think that will stay. Even though the time might shift, we'll see what happens. Um, but I suppose that's a way of me saying, just letting, reminding folks know that there's only, I guess, a couple of months left of the way things are right now. And then we're going to shake them up again and we're going to try something new. And hopefully a lot of that will involve the, the mobile archive in the new year, but there might be some downtime again before really getting out there and engaging with folks. But yes, the bus is on its way. And Sophia, hello, Sophia. Oh, Sophia saying love, love, love what you do. Well, I love what you do, Sophia. And folks, check Sophia Campbell out if you haven't already. There's some beautiful, inspirational, wonderful stuff going on there. And your live streams are beautiful and heartwarming and touching. Most of them I think happen on Instagram, if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sophia, if you're still here. Because folks, I understand that not everyone can stay for the whole hour and a half that I'm making art with you here. That's okay. Dip in, dip out, do what feels right to you. I understand, my feelings aren't gonna be hurt. And Sandra, hello, Sandra. Sandra's saying hello to everyone and I hope you're all doing good. Right back at you, Sandra. So much excitement for you this week. Oh, wonderful. So Sophia is saying, please include me in some more programs, maybe an abundance tree workshop. Sophia, oh, <laughs> Sophia, that sounds like a fantastic workshop. An abundance tree workshop. Sophia, okay, I'll be emailing you. Keep an eye on your inbox, okay? Because that sounds phenomenal. I love that, love that. And I know Sophia did one of the, uh, like a live stream for us. There was a, a vision board workshop and this was like closer to the beginning of, of our virtual programming. And it was just, of course, lovely. 
And I really loved how you introduced music to the process too. I think music is such a powerful creative force and we forget it sometimes. We, it's, it's almost so much a part of our lives that we forget sometimes to uh, play with music in an intentional way. And I love how it's just a part of what you do. And Jay saying, yes, Mary, when the bus gets up and running and out in the community, I would love to talk to you about coming out to do something with my girl guides. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, and it will be about finding balance, I think, um, with everything and figuring out what works. Something else that came out of the conversation I was having with the Trent students today was just a reminder of how this is, like the living room is not just an organization, it is a living, breathing work of art and at the same time, it is an artist. It's almost like a real character in people's lives. So it grows, it evolves, it changes, it responds to things. And I think part of that will just be getting out there and exploring that. What is this thing that we have now? Because just like the studio, there's this idea of this is what we want and this is what we want it to be. We've kind of envisioned that, right? And we've planned for it. It's manifested in this weird and wonderful way, not exactly in the way we were originally hoping. Um, in the beginning, it was just gonna be a step van. Now it's a strange bus, <laughs> but it's better. And if we'd gotten what we'd hoped for or really put our minds to at the very, very beginning of this process, I don't think it would be as enriching. I think time and the delays and all the things that have caused the frustrations for us have actually helped enrich what's happening right now and informed what's happening right now. And I'm glad to have had the delays to a certain extent. And for me, just generally being the impatient kind of creator that I am, they have, it's helped me slow down, just slow the heck down and appreciate what we do have and who we have out there in the community, right? So yes, yes, I, I, I will continue saying yes <laughs> and saying no every once in a while to things that come up. And yes, the living room, community art studio. Oh, Laura, hello, Laura, Laura as living room. Oh, now we have Laura as Laura and says it will be what it will be. And you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And that's a really exciting thing. I think it's the only way it could be. Right? Because if we set something in stone and give ourselves no room to improvise and yeah, to be, to be like find an attunement or to be responsive, then it just becomes boring. It becomes something that's really set. And well, I've never really wanted to be a part of something like that. So it will be an adventure. It will be an adventure. That is what we can say. But I am interested in especially in the next few months where things are cold, when we can't necessarily sit outside to make art in the way we you know, would be able to do in the warmer months. I am looking forward to what? To kind of just sitting, being still in community, right? Doing whatever we can, but using the time, using it as an opportunity to observe and learn about areas we haven't been able to connect with before, to learn about what it feels like to be in neighborhoods or to like work with folks through a window. Like when we had the studio space, there were doors, people could come in and we could welcome people. We could engage in that way, kind of set an internal structure to everything that was going on within this organism that is the living room. And now it's different, right? So figuring out what exactly different looks like, what different feels like, uh, that is, I think it's gonna be fun. Yeah, strange and fun. And I'm looking to other organizations for inspiration as well to see what they're doing and what it is that we might be able to do to complement what they're doing. But I definitely, you know, there are hopes, there are dreams, there are ideas that are rolling around in my mind that I'm playing with. And we'll just, yeah, it will be exciting. And Laura's saying, I'm getting better at doing just that. Today I was supposed to work, but had to call in, pumping out two inches of water from your basement. 
Oh, oh, Laura, I am so sorry. Um, and that Laura says, this is just what today has thrown at me and I am dealing with it. And Laura says, yay me. But I say, yeah, yay you, right? That sometimes that's all we can do and to give ourselves enough, to pay attention to ourselves enough that we can say, right, I need to stop. I can't do anything else other than what is right in front of me in this moment. That is a kind of attunement to self in our own lives, to paying attention. Because otherwise what happens? We, you know, there's just so many things and that really sucks though. I'm not trying to make that sound <laughs> like a, everything happens for a reason because no, sometimes just things happen and they suck. And that's one of them, Laura, I am sorry. But I wanna congratulate you on just calling it and saying, nope, this is what I have to do. And within that decision, that choice, to just be there, be present with <laughs> that, that mess or whatever else might unfold, who knows? There might be joy, there might be pleasure in some things, right? Um, Laura's saying, I do have donations that I need out sooner than later, must clear out the stuff for that reno that is coming. And <laughs> Laura agrees, again, it totally sucks, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. It sucks. Yeah, and there are little tiny things, I'm sure each one of us, there are days, and today I had a little bit of that this morning on my way to the meeting at Trent, not anywhere near that, thankfully, but little kind of things with my fur family, my pets, and running, and I lost my mask along the way to the school, and I had this moment, I was like, of I was late and I was like, do I run back and find my mask in the middle of the road? And if I find my mask, do I put it on? No, um, just continue, just make a choice, trust that choice and go with it. And it turned out that choice for me anyways, turned out to be the right choice. And when I was walking back, I did find my mask. People must have thought that I was strange and weird for picking up a mask from out of the middle of the road. I didn't put it on just in my pocket, but, uh, I think just moments like that of committing to ourselves, and maybe that's a theme for today, like revisiting simplicity, committing to ourselves, and being able, like doing our best to be present with whatever we have at hand. I think that's, that's something that sounds easy to do, but it isn't always easy to do. And again, like things, there's this, just speaking for myself, and I don't know if anyone else out there is experiencing this, um, but with, you know, things kind of this interesting thing of we're moving back out, things are steaming and reminding us of, you know, pre-pandemic times, and we have this opportunity to, I'm not going to use the word normal because I really don't know what normal means these days still, but things are busy again, they're very full and that wonderful time we gave ourselves, the wonderful kind of permission to be still with ourselves is kind of, for me at least, has gone poof. It's been stretched quite thin. Um, and I know there are folks who've worked through everything. We've been working in our small way through everything, but there's a certain stillness, a collective unconscious stillness that was here before when people needed one another, needed to tune in to one another a little more specifically and intentionally that seems to have slipped away now. And that might just be me. Maybe that's just me. Um, but I'd like to rebuild some of that back in and protect some of that before I just, you know, all my energy goes out. I want to protect some of that energy and put some things in place to make sure that, you know, as we move forward, I still have enough spoons in my cutlery drawer to tackle whatever might be next. <laughs> yeah, but absolutely, Laura, I hear you about the donations and to other folks, we are so lucky at the living room. We have so many fantastic donations that come our way. Um, and it's, we're at a point, one of, I think one of the first events we do out in the community, I'm just gonna be bringing some bins wherever we go to say, take what you need for art supplies because we have so much right now and I need to make some space in our storage space. So keep an eye out for that as well. And before, you know, so yeah, before we can take in more donations, I think 
We need to share some of the wealth we have with the community, some of the abundance, as Sophia would say. And Sophia back again saying, I am grateful for the time to sit still. I do not want to go back to the world's normal. I am creating my normal. <sighs> Sophia, do I have a mic to drop? I only have this, so I'll just drop that. Beautiful. That was, that was a water, cray water soluble crayon drop. Yeah. Why, why go back to a normal that doesn't suit us, that doesn't feel right for us? If we have the privilege, enough privilege, to make a choice, to try and be strong within that choice, and to recognize where we can seek out supports to kind of build up that strength within ourselves, why not do that? And being still, it's not a, it shouldn't be a luxury. It shouldn't be a privilege. It shouldn't be something that if we're good enough or we get our work done fast enough or I think it's an essential thing being still. I think that's what enables us to take on everything else. And too often I think that stillness, which is not necessarily the same thing as downtime, at least in my opinion, I think it gets confused with downtime a lot. And as soon as that happens, you kind of think, oh, well, it's not a priority downtime because I need to be up. I need to be on, right? And that's, again, when we start giving away our energy to folks, not just to people, but to everything, everything, right? So prioritizing that stillness, making it something we can build into our day for our own health, our own well-being. I agree with you, Sophia. I don't want to go back to the way things were. I, there are certain things I miss and I want to create more opportunities for, but I want to create opportunities for those things in a more healthy way. And I will be open to anyone else in the community who wants to reorganize that inner furniture, you know, take a clear out of what's inside, take stock. And if the relationship that folks have with the living room changes because they're prioritizing themselves, oh yeah. That's an amazing thing. And Wendy just underlining that to Sophia saying, this is great. I needed permission to be still. <sighs> yeah. Why is it so difficult? Why is it so difficult to give ourselves permission to be still? Yeah. Question of the hour, question of the afternoon, question of my life. And Sophia saying, attracting stillness and abundance does not equal the hustle. Ooh, ooh, hoo, hoo, interesting. I'm gonna need to unpack that. Feel free to elaborate, Sophia. I'd like to learn more about what that means for you. Because there is the hustle, and even in the word hustle, I think we can even break down. There's hustle that benefits us, that energizes us, that kind of carries us with a certain momentum. And then there's hustle that sometimes I think it's confused or mixed in with that, which is fighting against something within us that is resisting for a reason, right? Like pushing against something that does not want to move, trying to make it move, trying to generate something that isn't quite ready to be generated yet. Maybe, I don't know. Like I think there's, Again, it all comes down to knowing ourselves well enough that we can take a moment of stillness within that movement, right? Anything that's activated to be able to say, where am I with this? How do I feel about this? Is this, is this a good thing? Is this something that I want right now? Or is this something that's actually preventing me from having what I want? And as soon as we allow for even a moment of that kind of stillness, just to acknowledge whatever's going on inside of us, I think it becomes easier. It opens up more, right? Oh, interesting. So Sandra, fantastic. So this is an interesting thing about stillness and the permission. I think it ties in this idea of allowing for ourselves what we need to do. And for Sandra, I know part of the desire has been to travel again to go back specifically to Cuba, if you can. And Sandra is just sharing with everyone, I had an appointment this morning and met a fellow traveler who also goes to the same resort in Cuba that you go to. And he has been going there for years. Sandra, what a coincidence. 
what a coincidence. And it's a coincidence that we were, maybe not, maybe it is. We were talking about um, the lovely strange coincidences that have happened in all our lives and in the living room just this past Tuesday morning in the AM Art Hive, the Good Morning Art Hive Zoom that we do. And that's wild. That's wild that that happened. It kind of makes sense. You're thinking, you know, that energy's out there. You're dreaming it. Everything starts with an idea. Everything starts with a dream. Everything starts with being able to name something that we want. Oh, and Bri hey, hey, Bridget B. Noonan, how you doing? Uh, Bridget B. Noonan says, uh, I think societally, the expectation is that we must do, 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 do. Otherwise, we are lazy. Lazy. Uh, sometimes I'm personally uncomfortable with stillness because I want the distraction from some things that live on the inside. And that's a really good point, too. So it, how do we define stillness for ourselves? It doesn't necessarily have to be that absence of everything else. I think stillness is just acknowledging, and for me anyway, stillness is more about acknowledging and stepping back enough so that I can kind of evaluate things and know if I have to give permission, like Wendy was saying, permission to myself to do something. So again, it's, it's still some kind of doing. There's intentionality within it. Because otherwise, yeah, um, there are some days, some moments in my life where I am the distraction, the being able to be involved and engaged with something else is absolutely essential. But there's even stillness within that if I can just find a way to be present with the thing that is bringing me that relief or that joy or just a sense of otherness from the thing that I need a bit of perspective from, right? But thank you, B, because that highlights something. I think sometimes people get confused with this idea of stillness and again, do nothingness of just like meditating like an unintentional meditation where we just kind of zone out and just pay attention to our own inner thoughts and without intention, without structure. And sometimes we do need to shake things up. We need to have some movement within the stillness. Oh, wow. Is that something I just read? I was reading, um, yeah, I think it's an Ernest Hemingway quote. He says, move, and you know what? I could be completely wrong. And Hemingway, yeah. Excellent writer, not a huge fan of the human, just to be put that out there. But the quote was, do not confuse movement with action. So there's something in there that's really interesting to me, that sense of, it could be the same for stillness with inactivity or stillness with even quiet. Something each one of us has to define for ourselves. Oh. And hello, Nicole, how you doing? Welcome. And Sophia, uh, excellent. So Sophia explaining a little bit more, just like you said, Mary, says Sophia, knowing ourselves and what aligns with us and not being hmm, all things to everyone. Nurture who and what we are and what excites us and sit with that. Yeah, I think for each one of us, it's going to be different. And I like that idea of not being all things to everyone because that perhaps is something that happens when we get busy, when I get busy, if I can zone into what's not working for me in those moments, when I'm feeling like I've overextended myself, when I'm going splat. Um, it's generally a something to do with trying to be all things to everyone. It generally has something to do with doing, trying to do too much all at once, right? And not having a moment to check in with, you know, what, my cutlery drawer to see how many spoons I have. What other colors do we need in this, folks? Let's see. I think I know. Let's go for some orangey, orangey, orangey alongside this purpley, purpley, purpley. Yeah, the thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts, the swirling, swirling thoughts. Sometimes you just want them to take a break. Just want them to go to Cuba for a little bit, take a little vacation. <laughs> there is something to be said for having choice so that we can 
again, then that's a privilege a lot of the time, right? To have the choice to be able to sit back. But I, I think that's what we're all trying to work towards is being in a place with ourselves that it doesn't have to be about privilege, that self-care, that mindfulness, that intentional attunement to what we need and who we are doesn't have to be something that's a special event, right? Part of our daily practice. And B saying, oh, that's a good one. Agreed. Hemingway was a good writer, but not like, <laughs> yeah, the not most, not a kind human at all, B. I, yeah, it's so, oh, conversations we have today about separating the artist from the art. It's a difficult one. Not an easy one to answer. Not a, There's no clear cut answer. I think it's a personal decision for each of us about where we stand on those folks whose art we appreciate, but whose personal humaning has been, well, just diabolical, really. Uh, Nikki says, Nikki, hello again. In this society, we seem to value production, production, production. So stillness is sometimes seen as a waste of time or non-productive because you can't show the outcome to someone. It is inside of you. The outcome is inside of us in those moments. Yes, you're right, Nikki. Um, the value on kind of observable, quantifiable, empirical evidence to things. Show me the proof. Show me the outcome. And that somehow will make it real. Yes, yes, if you have that, if that's something that's available, yes, but you're right, not everything is definable that way. We can't prove everything in that way. Um, and I suppose there's a point in all of our lives, again, this personal relationship we develop with ourselves. Uh, what is it that's important to us and where we need to define things for ourselves and how important is it to prove things to other people? And are we allowed to say, and I would say, yes, we're allowed to say, but are we allowed to communicate that to other people? And that's, I suppose, about boundaries, right? Oof, yeah, be saying inside work is hard to show to other folks. It takes time, yeah. And who says we have to show it to folks? Does that have more to do with them than it does for us? Um, again, that inner dance of saying, you know, who do I choose to reveal this to? Is it necessary to reveal it to them? Or do I hope that over time I do it to myself, I show it to myself, I live it myself, and then others will see. And it takes time, it takes time, right? What colors? What colors? I feel like a little more green, maybe. Greeny blue, maybe? Yeah. The constant fight of wanting to produce, to demonstrate, to show, to prove. And sometimes how we conflate that with our value, that we're only valuable and only of worth if we're working, if we're producing, if we're contributing in ways that other people recognize. And oh, hello again, Nicole. I joined my first knitting loom group on Facebook today. I realized that I haven't used my looms that are about 10 years old to their full potential until now. Fantastic. Nicole, if you wanna share a link to that knitting loom group on Facebook, I'm sure there might be other folks out there who have them who would love to learn more. And that, yeah, Bee's already asking. Oh, what do you make on your looms? They're very cool art invention. See, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> And I'm assuming, are these the looms, like the round? Are these the round looms? Like, the, um, we have some of those at the studio in storage that will probably make their way into the mobile art hive as well. They're the ones that, kind of like the, um, oh, how am I trying to explain this? Am I explaining it? The round kind of hoopy things with the little hooks on them. It's sort of like in like a big, a big old um, corking kind of experience. Is that what it is? And for folks who you know what corking is, um, it sounds, it's a funny word to say out loud. Um, what's another word for corking? Folks who know, help me out here. <laughs> no. I've decided to put the color around my hand today, partly because I just did it and I was going for it. 
And now I'd like to explore what goes inside the hand. I'm playing with that idea of There's so many things with this kind of the simplicity of hand tracing art, so many fun little things you can do. I don't want to think about it too much. I want to let it be whatever it wants to be. And, oh, Joanna, hi, Joanna. Uh, Joanna says, I love corking, AKA spool knitting. Spool knitting, that's the word. Thank you so much. <laughs> what would I do without you folks? Um, and, uh, oh yeah, Nicole clarifying, yes, they're round looms with pegs like giant corkers or French knitting. That's also another name for it, isn't it? You're right, Nicole. I usually use them for hats or scarves. And Joanna saying hello to everyone. And, oh, yep, that's right. So the French knitting, Sophia following up. Oh, you folks, thank you for coming to my rescue with that. And uh, Sophia also saying knitted rope or some cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many interesting things you can do with those. The spool knitting little French uh, knitting looms that are out there. It takes time, it does take time. So it's definitely something that um, you wanna give yourself some sp lovely space to work with them. And yeah, not something that necessarily can be completed in like a 15 minute or a half hour sit down. And Bridget says though, yeah, they do make the knitting go faster from what I've seen of folks using them. And I think one of the things that I love about them is that I was supposed to knitting where from my brain, you can, you know, drop stitches. There's kind of, you know, this weird mathy thing that happens uh, that can be frustrating at times. What do I want to do here? I am reaching for, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna start this with an X-Acto knife. So folks, just gonna reach that out. I'm gonna cut out my hand. I'm gonna cut out my hand. So I'm gonna lift out this other piece of cardboard I have here for the moment. Um, I think there's something really satisfying about using the new looms and they're, it's just a more accessible, it feels like a more accessible process than using knitting needles. So that's why Nicole, I was thinking if you want to post a link to that group, please feel free. Uh, there will be other people undoubtedly who would like to join that group and learn how to use the loom. Now, is this doing what I want it to do? A little bit. I might just start this off and then switch over to a pair of good old fashioned scissors. Yes, there we go. And put that away. Hello, scissors. Hello, scissors. And Laura says, I have a square look. Oh. A, uh, a square loom for pot holders and coasters, small mats or trivets. Going to use some odd socks that are holy. What? So I understand the square loom part, Laura. Um, how do the socks fit in? <laughs> you mean like, will you be cutting up the socks to repurpose them into pot holders and things like that? That's awesome. And Nicole saying, I'm making a stuffed gnome. <laughs> There's mostly video tutorials on this group, I think. Nothing wrong with a good video tutorial. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that. All right, let's see what I can do with this here. Come on, hand. Give me a hand, hand. Oh, sorry about that, folks. I'm sorry, I knew I shouldn't, and it came out of my mouth. Oh yes, so Laura's saying using loops that they weave. Yes, okay, I see now, yeah. And Joanna saying, I once saw a photo of an art installation which was a ginormous spool with rope stitching and basketball sized balls threaded into the knitted tube laying in coils all around the park. The public was invited to weave on it. Amazing, that, that does sound amazing. If you have a link or a photo of that, oh, maybe uh, post it in the show and tell post afterwards. I'm a huge fan of, um, oh, you know what? Just a little too tight. I think I'm gonna have to revisit the X-Acto knife. I'll come back to you, scissors. Um, I'm a huge fan of large group knitting, crocheting, texture, like textile fiber arts projects. Um, that's actually something I'm hoping we can do through the mobile art studio again. 
in the art hive, it wasn't uncommon for people to make art for themselves. And that's something that people, we welcomed and we encouraged, of course. But because we have opportunities with the mobile art hive to place make and people will be moving in and out of that place that we make a little more freely and loosely, I really love to focus on more collaborative activities where people co-create something big or awesome or weird or wonderful together. And it may not always be something that they can take home with them afterwards, but we'll have workshop kits for that. Um, but I like the idea of creating installations and things that actually affect or impact or reshape the environment they sit in, because then everyone else who's around will also have an opportunity to be impacted by that creation. They may not participate in the creation of it themselves, but when you see it as a passerby or a community member who lives there or works there, it, it will, you know, positively or weirdly, quirkily have like an influence, a subtle influence even on your day. And I like that. I like that we're taking art to the streets. I like that um, just bringing that creativity out in public somehow. And that's the kind of project I want to do. So if you have a photo of it, let me know. I know in, um, for folks who watched the art assignment, is anyone out there fans of the art assignment? Uh, it's Sarah Green, no, Sarah, Sarah Erstel Green, I think uh, that's how her name goes. John Green's uh, partner. Um, so John Green of the Vlog Brothers and writer of lovely books. Um, his partner had a YouTube show for a while called The Artist Assignment, The Art Assignment which we were always resharing and posting on the living rooms page. And one of the artists there created a giant rag rug, like really hand, kind of like arm crocheted rag rug with big strips of fabric, like old sheets and things like that. And it was this rug that grew to be so huge that whole communities could sit on them, that you could roll it out in a park, almost like an enormous picnic blanket that everyone could share. That's the kind of thing that I love. Um, but Laura's saying, oh, okay. Yes, weaving. Your keyboard doesn't suck, Laura. We get it. I get it. People, we figure it out, I think. We put the pieces together. I understand now when I'm commenting on other people's, hey, paintbrush, where'd you go? Um, live streams. Sometimes I want to get it out there so quickly that my fingers are just can't keep up with my brain. And even now, my mouth can't keep up with my brain sometimes. Need to take a breath, slow down a little bit. Okay to slow down. And Joanna's saying, I will try and find it. Thank you. And that, you know what, I'll put it out there for anyone else that might be watching or listening in the live stream or once it's been archived. If you ever come across cool ideas or, you know, workshop ideas or community collaborations that you think, you know what, I'd like to try that. I want to see that happen. Um, feel free to share them with us, right? And if you want to be a part of helping them happen, even better, we can find ways to do that. There we go. Come, 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 come. Always a point in the live stream where I begin talking to my art. And I have to remember, I don't like working with knives generally. Um, at least not this one. Oh, but we were talking last week. You know what? I haven't explored the Fisker options that were presented last week. So I will do that still. I promise. There's some people who can wield X-Acto knives just like they were, you know, drawing with a pencil or a pen. I am not one of those people. But I was hoping I could save the shape of my hand and incorporate it into other things. You know what? I'm going to try the scissors again. And I have the right to change my mind about things. <laughs> and maybe it might be that I just have to let go of the hand. Yes, I think let go of the hand. So I'm just going to do this. 
I'm going to separate the hand into several pieces. And Sandra Sheepwash asking, do you still have the loom for making big mats? You bet we do, Sandra. You bet we do. And that will definitely be coming out on the road with us. So we had a wonderful donation from an, um, a local organization who made milk bag rugs, milk rugs. Um, and the idea was they would distribute these big giant looms about like six foot by four feet maybe, or maybe five feet. And people would use old milk bags, which is a very Canadian thing, uh, to weave plastic mats that people could sleep on. I've seen them used for lots of really cool things. Everything from like creating garden furniture for yourself to like tote bags and things like that. Essentially, you're just making a big piece of fabric out of plastic milk bags. And because they're food grade safety plastics that go into those bags, they don't release the same kind of toxic fumes that other plastics might. So that's one of the reasons why the milk bags are such an important ingredient in that. Um, so yes, Sandra, we're going to be carrying that around and I'd like to make some uh, some more mats for folks, some more milk bag mats, because even within our community in Durham Region, we have plenty of folks who can use them, who enjoy using them. Um, enjoy maybe is the wrong word there, but some folks have a preference for using them, especially if they're sleeping rough, because they're waterproof and they lift folks off the ground, off the snow a little bit. And if you're, if you don't have a place to stay, and that is something that is an option for you, having something like this that just helps keep your sleeping bag a little drier, or your, your possessions a little drier, can be a big deal. And it's, forgive me if it sounds a little strange and casual to talk about that kind of thing in such a way, in such a casual way. Um, the truth is it's a reality for a lot of the folks that live here. Things are getting slowly, for like the most extreme cases, slowly better. And uh, we're housing more and more people, but there's still a huge shortage of housing, affordable housing, but also appropriate housing, safe housing, housing that people actually want to live in and can live in without having to compromise their mental health. So working on one thing at a time, one piece of the puzzle, at a time. And as an arts organization, that's something that we can do. Hello, hand. Where did my thumb go? Oh, there it is. That's weird. It's like a magic trick. Boop, boop. I'll put you aside for a moment. So here we go. That's what we have here. And Nicole saying, I found a, a set of knitting looms at Value Village several weeks ago. I didn't buy them, but it was nice to see them selling things like that and some yarn there too. Yeah, there's always some nifty finds at thrift stores. I know, like now that we can go back there and it's all, you know, reasonably safe to do so if you're comfortable doing it. Yeah, some great finds, especially certain times of year when people clean out their craft cupboards or realizing that they finished with certain things and they want to try new things. You can find some really great stuff. So I hope those knitting looms have found a really good home, Nicole. I bet they probably did. And uh, B saying the plastic mats protect your sleeping bag from the damp ground, which is so important to staying warm in a Canuck winter, right? Absolutely. So here we go. So I have this. Let's see, what do I want to do with this? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I'm gonna switch gears and work on this. It's three, oh, well, it's just after three, so we've got about 20 minutes left. So I'm just gonna go for it. Again, not thinking too much. I'm not gonna overthink this. I'm just gonna let it happen. Make some bold choices and see where it takes me. Again, making a decision. When life throws too much at you, Spontaneous art making, just allowing yourself to make some big choices can feel like a lovely little vacation. Even if it doesn't turn out the way you hope, even if it's a mess or it doesn't work. You never know, it might become a platform for something else exciting. 
It might spark off something else that will be in your eyes or your heart a success. I think I want some contrast for sure. Indeed. But yes, Laura, uh, Lysander, we have that loom and I want to explore making other things on it as well. And we have a ton of fabric. <laughs> we have a ton of fabric. We also have a lot of fun fur right now in storage. So folks, if you're out there and you have an activity kit idea for something um, simple, all ages, and all ages can mean everything. It doesn't mean just for adults. It doesn't mean just for kids or it doesn't have to be something, uh, I don't know, it's hard. Sometimes I think all ages scares people because they think it has to, it can't be childish or it can't be too grown up. The truth is, is I think all ages for me has more to do with something that's a little more accessible to everyone, an activity or an arts endeavor that will allow people to just be themselves and explore different aspects of themselves. And sometimes things that are childish and fun, like the one I'm doing today, can and really involve you and invite you and you can take it in as an adult and explore it in a, a kind of profound way. Whereas, you know, sometimes children love taking on those so-called grown-up art tasks and we surprise one another all the time with what we're able to do if we just kind of take away those labels. But, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna pick up my paintbrush. Ah, uh, hello, paintbrush. Uh, yeah, so if anyone has any ideas for fun fur, we've got some. And I'd like to put it into some workshop kits, some activity kits, but haven't quite figured out the right way to do that yet. And I know if I share this, if I kind of source it out to the community, we'll get some interesting ideas back. Maybe sensory mats of some kind. Hmm. Maybe incorporating into that. Yeah. But definitely looking forward to doing some textile fiber arts things with the community. And that loom is a great example. Once it's set up, you can do some really fun, well, it's just fun to get stuck in. And it has that sense of, you know, doing something that's a little bit larger than ourselves, contributing, giving back, collaborating. And, uh, Ah, yes, B saying, I'm participating in an art therapy engagement online for a couple hours a week. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Um, specifically for folks who struggle with perfectionism and have difficult lived experiences. Love it. Love, love, love it. And it's a great supported way to make spontaneous art that isn't supposed to be perfect. Absolutely. Like, I think... I would imagine a lot of folks, the, the root of this perfectionism comes from difficult lived experience. Um, again, to what extent, that's another story. But I think um, that inner critic always starts somewhere, or critics if you have more than one, which so many of us do. It's not a voice that belongs to us. It just kind of takes up space in our brains. and. Again, easier said than done sometimes to allow ourselves to just create for the sake of creating and make, you know, not live within a certain structure to let ourselves just do and see what happens. And I see it all the time. I see it within myself. The strangeness that comes with, um, is it okay? Is it okay to do this? Is it okay to try this? This constant dialogue that we have to or we end up having with ourselves that becomes easier over time, hopefully, where we say, yes, it's okay. Yes, and especially in art, what's the worst that can happen? And we can learn to tolerate, if we can tolerate the ugly and the misshapen and the mistakes and the whatever it might be, if we can learn to tolerate that and what we create, right? that's a huge step forward in learning how to tolerate it within ourselves and maybe even love it 
one day. Oh, so there's a few votes here for the fun fur on finger puppets and hand puppets as well. Folks, if you've got like a visual on that, send it through or an idea if you want to sketch it out or if you want to create a workshop kit for us. Let me know. Send me an email. Would be, yes, would love, love, love to know. And uh, B saying, <laughs> uh, we made pictures of our inner critics last week and wrote letters to the inner critic to thank them for trying to protect us and to ask for a bit of grace from them. Yep, absolutely. Again, these voices, it's not that they're not constructive, right? Sometimes they have really constructive things to say. They just might not be constructive in the moment. Or maybe their jobs, you know, maybe they're redundant. Maybe we've moved on, but we haven't helped them move on yet, right? Re the redundant inner critic will always find another job. <laughs> and grow and, you know, maybe one day those inner critics will be inner allies. That's the hope, isn't it? That we'll find something there, discover something there. What do I want to do with this hand? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have enough time today, but I'm, but I might do. What is that, Mary? Share your thoughts. Share your thoughts with the crowd. I'm thinking that some white ink on this, maybe. Some white ink. Yeah. Reminds me of some art that Ellen Torrey, musician, lovely musician, Ellen, Ellen Marie Torrey uh, created for some of our Patreon supporters based on something musical, which I fully don't understand. I'll put that out there right now. But um, I suppose once upon a time, um, for instrumentation and understanding various chords and things like that, there would be these hands that people would draw with these illustrations uh, in the palm of the hands that signified different chord structures or finger placements or things like that. And as an artist or a musician, you could look at that and it would be this visual reference that you could take with you. and. Um, I'll see if I can find out what that's called. Someone out there, if you're a Patreon supporter, and there's a few of them, you might know. You might know what I, what the heck I'm talking about. But I'm sensing here that maybe there's some kind of designs I can do with some white ink to illuminate that. Maybe this is about the hand. Something, a guide for myself, a reference for myself, the kind of music of my life, however I want to define music on any given day. Oh, Wendy, fantastic. So on the theme of finger puppets, I have a pattern for a hand puppet somewhere. I will look. Yes, Wendy, thank you so much. And that's how it works, folks. We hopefully are of enough resource to one another. And I don't mean to simply take, take, take from everyone out there in the community. I hope that there is some sort of reciprocity here. And if there's not, let me know. Because I feel like as soon as it becomes just about one thing or one person or one way of doing things, everything begins to suffer a little bit. Now, do I have some ink handy that I can play with? Let me look around, I've got buttons. What else do I have? I've got silk screening paint. I've got all sorts of glue here. Hmm, maybe not to hand, oh my gosh. Oh, Mary, 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 Mary. Yeah, I think I'll add some white ink here to highlight and perhaps some black ink in other areas around. Huh. If I'd used oil pastel on this, I could have done the scraffito and kind of scraped it away, which also would have been interesting. Let's see, what do I want to do now? <laughs> Let's add some more color. Let's add some more definition over here 
to balance things out. Again, try not to think of it things too much. Overthinking just feeds some of those inner critics within me so too much. Which is another time where it's nice to step back, have some stillness, or alternatively, talk it out. Talk it out loud, whether I'm even just talking to myself, talking to someone else. It can be a helpful thing to do. Externalize, externalize, externalize. Get it out there into the world somehow. And I think too, this is National Novel Writing Month. Yes, November is that month, am I correct? For those folks who enjoy doing that. So this is another thing that I think working within the visual arts, we can borrow from writing this sense of drafts of things and the value of a sketchbook and the value of having places to put the ideas and to work through ideas um, without judgment. Because every little bit of work we do in that way, whether we're working on something art-based or we're working on ourselves as human beings, every little piece of that builds up and it clarifies, it distills, and it allows us to, to find the right path, the right path forward. So permission to make a mess, permission to do things spontaneously and to not judge ourselves as harshly as we might be used to. And maybe that ties back into that conversation about living in a culture that's so product oriented. Maybe it's uh, about just expecting things of ourselves, expecting to be busy, to be, you know, having to redefine what value and worth is on any given day, in any given moment, giving ourselves permission to do that. Because what works for us today might not work for us tomorrow. And what we enjoy and value in ourselves today might have to change tomorrow. Permission to be flexible with ourselves. To change our minds. We're allowed to change our minds. To figure things out in the moment. almost like we were works of progress, works of art in progress ourselves. All right, folks. Oh, where's that ink? Ink, why don't I have Jedi powers, people? Why can't I just call supplies to me? Well, with great power comes great responsibility. So maybe it's a good thing. I don't know if I want any more responsibility right now. <laughs> oh. A little more here. A little darker here. Maybe I want this hand to merge with the black, maybe. I want this to be something that appears like almost like a heat, you know, they're like, um, like a heat, uh, signal or something, you know, remember those t-shirts from, well, for those of you who are old ish like me, those t-shirts that, uh, would react to your body temperature. Do folks remember those? Weird thing to bring up in the last minutes of the stream. And a weird thing to wear. I, I wouldn't want people to see where I get sweaty, but you know, some people did. Um, but I think there's something about heat signature. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. This for me seems to have a heat signature vibe to it, which is interesting. And again, of course, taking time to understand what it is that I'm creating. Once it's done and I have some space from it, I can come back, I can revisit it, do a little journaling. And again, just coming back to that point too, that um, so a lot, the program that we have, we're going to, it's going to be here until, you know, the end of December. 
or the, when we go on holidays, which will probably, you know, looking at December, to be honest, we'll probably have two weeks of programming in December, and then it'll be a little less, you know, consistent, depending on where we're at with the mobile archive, and also just seasonal stuff for everyone. So you might be looking at some fragmented programming then, but um, we will be shaking things up in the new year. So I do encourage you, if you haven't had a chance to appreciate some of the cool, awesome stuff that our other coordinators are doing, that our facilitators are doing, um, please do tune in to see if there's anything that appeals to you. There's different Zoom groups, the Monday night wellness Zoom that we have, the Tuesday night art spark, last night Cree had <laughs> loads of fun exploring, you know, gender, gender identity through drag makeup and some top tips for folks who are playing with that kind of thing, playing with image and exploring, just looking for that permission to play with themselves as a canvas. Um, and tomorrow on, what day is it today? Today's Wednesday. So of course on Thursday mornings, we have the writers Zoom group that happens. And in the new year, we might reevaluate and we might reassess and have to change things up. But for now, those things are still there. So if you can, uh, if you want to take a visit, visit and like a little art tourist and see what's there, see what, if there's anything you like. Oh, and Sandra's saying, gotta run. I will see you later. Mwah, Sandra, have a wonderful afternoon. Um, can't wait to catch up with you and find out how things are going. And you know what? Maybe now is a good time to have a little close up to, and allow me to have a close up as well. So here we go. Oh, I like that. Oh, you know, isn't it funny? That inner critic again comes back. There's, when you're used to looking at something in one specific way, being able to get some kind of perspective of it, shake it up, look at it with fresh eyes. Sometimes you begin to see things that you just couldn't before. And I'm actually liking this as it is now. All it took was changing lenses, reframing it a little bit. Yeah, always worth taking a moment, stepping away, trying to look at something in a different way. I do like that. I do like that. <laughs> and I say that because yes, I'm surprised. It wasn't enough, but now when I look at it like this, it is enough, just as it is. It's enough, just as it is. Hmm. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes, right? We can't see, we can't see things clearly if we've been standing too close to them. We can't see things clearly if we don't give ourselves an opportunity to really see them or look at them. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense, does it? Doesn't make sense. But perhaps that's that breath that I was talking about, the stillness that Sophia was referencing and that Wendy was talking about permission, offering ourselves permission to have in our own life. What kind of stillness are you looking for or do you need in any given moment? Stillness might just be something that's different from what you've been immersed in. Stillness might just be, stillness can sometimes be slowing down. Doesn't mean not moving at all. Not necessarily. Sometimes stillness is just shifting, shifting things up, shaking things up a tiny bit so that you notice things that you couldn't notice before. So one last, let's see what, he, what happens here. If I highlight that, that thing that I saw in the close up, that I kind of dig. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's something here that I'm enjoying and I think I will let it sit. I'm going to let it sit. I'm gonna let it do its thing. And 
as that often happens, even when I let it sit even more and I come back to it and look at it with new eyes, it'll speak to me again, it'll say more to me again, it'll resonate in a slightly different way. And I like that. I like not having to finish everything in one go. I like being a work in progress and I like working on things that can be allowed to be in progress. That, does that make sense? Yeah? I think so. I think it makes sense. I think it makes enough sense. And that's all that really matters. Does it make enough sense for right now? And I hope it does. I hope it does to everyone else. I hope it makes enough sense for right now as it makes to me. <laughs> oh, folks, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing time with you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your contributions, your conversation, your art, your heart, all the things. Thank you to the folks who've been watching and not necessarily commenting. You matter too, and I appreciate your energy being in here, being mixed into this. Thanks to all the folks who watch once it's archived, who tune in on Facebook or YouTube to catch up with what we've been doing and to absorb the uh, Art Hive vibes. If it's something that benefits you, that gives you a little bit of something to ease your day, to inspire you, to shake things up in a positive way, then I'm happy we're here. And um, yeah, I'm happy you're there too. So folks, this is what we have. I'm gonna share a picture of it in the show and tell post on Facebook. If you have something that you'd like to share that you've been working on or something you'd like to highlight, um, or remind us of a link, an image to inspire people in the community or just for fun, right? Sharing things just for fun, that's okay too. You are more than welcome to do so. That post will go up in a few minutes once I'm done here. But thanks again for being here. And uh, as always, until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. Take care of yourselves, be kind to yourselves. Have faith that being a work in progress is, uh, it's enough. <laughs> oh, lovely, all the loveliness at the end of the stream. Make sure to read those comments too, folks from folks, all the thank yous and loveliness. We're a great community, even though we may not live in the same community. What a cool community we are, wherever we might be, doing whatever it is we do. Love it. Thanks, folks. See you again soon. Bye. <laughs>